It tastes like it tastes like victory. You know that? It's just like victory. Good evening to you. It is Friday, March twenty second, at ten fifteen. Your Purdue Boilermakers have put a baby to bed that needed to be put to bed a long time ago. It was crying. It was whining. It was kicking. It was raising hell. This baby been doing it for about a whole year. And Purdue finally did something about that baby. Got the pacifier in its mouth. That's one down, guys, girls. It's one down. Ah, I'm sure you feel better. I feel better. And I keep saying this. Three two-game tournaments. Three two-game tournaments. Can't do that. I can't, I can't have that. Sorry, my dad's in the room and he's watching live and there's a delay on that. I've already got all these screwy delays here. All right, well, I got the, the break here. I'm going to say thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to Homefield Apparel. Head over to Homefield Apparel. Enter Boiled 23 at checkout. Uh, get your favorite T-shirt or sweatshirt. Get 15% off. And, of course, I can't have that volume. I can't have that. I can't you can't hear. hear it? Yes, I can hear it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, and when you're on campus, uh, if you want to go celebrate tonight with uh, fellow Boilermaker boys and girls, it'll be a fun night on campus. I can guarantee that. Um, head towards the fire station. You got to turn that off. It's like I've got a delayed monitor. I can't. You got to turn that off. Just turn the volume down. Do something. Okay. Yeah. Get rid of it. Sorry. Uh, but head towards the fire station, and uh, and when you go there, uh, go in the front door. Yell boiled. Just yell boiled, and you're gonna get the respect that you deserve. I'm kidding. Uh, we talked to Adam and Jake about it. They're good sports, but don't don't yell boiled. You'll get a pint glass. You might get a pint glass where you get really lucky. In the bottom, you get a magnet with a with a BS logo on it. You may do that. I got a couple uh, this week. But if you go there, I can tell you, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get great service. You're going to get delicious food. You're going to have TVs on the wall. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. That's AJ's. Burgers, beef, and beer. Head over there. Eat AJ's.com before if you want to order ahead. All right, guys. Now, listen. Uh, I'm elated. I'm simply elated that one thing that was on the list is off the list. One box is checked, but there are many boxes that need to be checked. Many goals that this Purdue team had that are still in front of them. And the really good news is the way they did this tonight, they didn't play their best game. They didn't play a great game. What they did is they did what a uh, one does versus 16 in almost the entire history of the NCAA tournament. Only a couple exa uh, uh, examples of times it didn't work out this way, where the physicality, the pace, the athleticism, the depth, wears the other team down. And by the way, Purdue, this... <laughs> If you're old like me, you don't have to just think, you don't just think about Purdue losing to Fairleigh Dickinson when you think of really bad 16 versus 1. You think about back in the 90s where Purdue almost lost then too. So this wasn't new, but Purdue put the nail in the coffin, made history last year, and now they're doing everything they can to shake that reputation. If you have been watching CBS, every chance these yahoos have gotten to talk about Purdue, not only are they talking about Purdue, they've talked about that legacy and the fact that they lost to a 16. And yeah, it obviously is noteworthy and it's historical, but we get it. You don't have to talk about it every 45 minutes. My goodness. Before the game was tipped off, I was wound up. When the game started, I was wound up. I got more and more wound up listening to Van Gundy say stupid things. And so finally, I had the varsity app, Rob Blackman and Bobby Buckets, take me away. Take me away, Calgon and varsity app. And they saved me a little bit from myself and hurting myself and being too angry. And then Purdue did the thing that I wanted them to do, and they started flexing on them, right? It took a little bit of time. First half, you had a nine-point deficit. Within minutes in the second half, you had a 19-point deficit. When it was at about 15, I said to my dad and my wife and my son and my daughter, I said, this game is teetering. It's about to get bad. Purdue was merciful tonight. Purdue was merciful. It could have been gobs worse for Grambling. I got to tell you, I like Grambling's coach. I like the way he talks. I loved his interview the other night in Dayton. All good stuff, but I cannot stand it. When you have a team, maybe the guys don't understand or how to turn the switch on and off. Maybe that's Wisconsin's problem and Northwestern's problem and others. When you say you're going to play a guy physical, that doesn't mean when between plays, you start chucking people around, throwing Lance Jones on the ground, 
grabbing Zach Eady, pulling him down by his arm. By the way, that's, those, two, those two plays specifically, they might have been the smelling salts Purdue needed. Both of those were when the game was relatively close. Neither one of them was a foul. That's the big problem. And so then I say there's, there, are, there are elements to this garbage show that happens when Purdue plays. And I know a lot of people are dumb enough to say this is Purdue's fault. This isn't Purdue's fault. The style of play, the pace of the game, it is not Purdue's fault. Again, it is the fact when you say you're going to play not only a physical game, but a drag down, beat down game that is not basketball, that's the issue. Zach Eady had all of his superpowers on display tonight except for one. He, he is, his turnaround was working well. He was so patient, and he just kind of let the bad stuff fall off his shoulders over and over. Um, he was poised. He obviously, his footwork was impeccable. He is relentless. One thing, if you listen to Jay Wright talk about Zach Eady, he says the hardest working player he's ever seen without the ball. When Jay Wright says something like that, it matters. Jay Wright knows basketball quite a bit. And if I always say there's one thing that I'd like to see Painter become, it's Jay Wright. Jay Wright's career path is ridiculously beautiful because he won conference championships. Then he started winning a couple games in the tournament. And then finally he got over the threshold and he won two natties. And then Jay Wright said, that's it. I'm done. I'll take it, Maddie. If this is what you want to do, I'll take it. I'll take it. I would love to see it. But back to the Jay Wright respect. He knows the game. He sees the way Zach Eady plays the game. And a lot of these people on CBS, for some reason, don't get it. They don't understand what a foul is. They don't understand. I mean, even at the end of the game. So I turned the varsity app off in the closing minutes as I was trying to get this ready, get prepped for the, for the post game. And I had to listen to Van Gundy again, talking about Berg not getting fouled as he got tossed. It's a feat to throw down a human being that big. You don't just do it accidentally. Okay? You don't do it accidentally. And that, at that point, I said, okay, uh, Dante Jackson, um, call off your, your goons. Call them off. The game's over. Purdue had removed their guys. Nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody wants to get hurt. And so Purdue walks away healthy. That's a big deal. Purdue walks away shellacking the 16 seed. There are, but there are a lot of things I think as Purdue fans, we're like, okay, they can play better. Lance Jones can play a lot better, right? Purdue can hit their free throws a lot better. They did not, and I'm going to talk about statistically what they did tonight. It was not good. Purdue turned the ball way, way too much. Turn, turned the ball over way too much today. But in case you don't know this, this is what Grambling does. They really do turn teams over. That's statistically what they want to do. One thing I would say, and I wanted to talk about this a little bit. I wanted to do a pregame. Some of you guys asked, is there going to be a pregame? Is there going to be a quick cast? I just couldn't get myself settled down enough to do it, quite honestly. Um, but one thing that looked different about this team versus Fairleigh Dickinson is Fairleigh Dickinson didn't play the, the schedule that Grambling did this year. But Grambling got beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten. And I could do that over and over. I think it was 11 times in a row back in November to December this year or last year in 2023 leading into this regular season. So they loaded up their schedule with quality po opponents and then they just took their medicine and they got beaten up over and over. Fairly Dickinson didn't play that type of schedule. So you got to respect Grambling on one hand. But on the other hand, you say, again, just like Michigan State, what good is a loss? I don't know. Clearly, the computers love losses. So, um, But, again, if we're going to be level-headed, there, there are a lot of things Purdue can do better. If you saw the faces and the body language of Purdue after the game, you saw uh, Fletch Lawyer almost looking like a kid, just kind of grinning, because this is something these guys have been waiting a year to have the opportunity to do, and then they did it. So, you can breathe too, Purdue fan out there. Congratulations. Uh, you held it in check, and you... You bided your time well enough. I hope you enjoyed the regular season, and I hope we have a long couple of weeks now where we can really watch this Purdue team play their best basketball. As we saw back in 2019 when Boogie went on his historic NCAA tournament run, that's all you want to see, play their best basketball. You want to see Purdue play their best basketball. Whatever that means, wherever that leaves you, that's your shot, right? Purdue did not play their best basketball today. Um, and so that's, that's the big takeaway. Let's see what they can do versus, I think the game has yet to be decided, right? The second opponent. you got Utah State or... Um, Two, uh, nine and eight. Yeah, nine and eight, but Utah State and, um, uh, I can't remember, TCU. TCU. Um, so, and I don't think... Okay, yeah, it hasn't tipped off yet. It tips off at 10.30 Eastern. Now I see it. Um, 
that's going to be that's going to be a little bit more of a dogfight. Hopefully, those teams think they can beat Purdue straight up, and we see more basketball, and Purdue can play a little bit more free flowing, beautiful basketball like they had the chance to do a couple times this year. They did it versus Illinois one game, they did it versus Arizona another time. But most teams have decided, nope. We're just going to drag your, your big through the mud. And then the collateral damage, we don't care. Um, Edie got them in foul trouble early, and then the rest decided they were going to try to even things up. They couldn't even it up because Edie doesn't foul on the other side. But Grandma kept fouling, and somehow uh, the whistle stopped blowing. And that's when it got a little, little chippy, a little bit dangerous. But Purdue did their work early in the second half. Purdue wins 78-50. to 50. They win their 30th game of the year. They're now 30-4. and four. And if you like history, that's that's a really good record. You're getting close to the best all time, I believe, for any Purdue team. I think one more win puts you at 31, which is, I think, ties the all time. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard that someplace. If you're wondering where you get a shirt that says Purdue versus everybody, like my T-shirt, check our Red Bubble link in the um, in our um, in our notes. Uh, I designed this shirt just because I don't see this shirt anywhere, and I feel like this all the time. <laughs> Because I've got a chip on my shoulder, and I'm five foot four, and I'm a Purdue alum. Um, okay, so let's look at the stats. Uh, like I said, there, there's work to be done. Purdue can play better. One of the big things that they can do better, Zach Eady can hit the front of one, front end of one and ones, and he didn't do a lot of that in the first half. In the first half, he was four nine free throws. He ends eight of fourteen, scratched and clawed a little a little bit, got closer to his average of seventy two percent, but didn't get quite there. Purdue shoot, makes fifty nine percent of their free throws, which is not good at all. And there's a good team that can cost you a game. Purdue didn't. Um, Purdue went to the free throw line a good amount, going over 20 times is always good. Got to hit the free throws. Second thing, Purdue didn't hit their threes as well as you'd like to see. Their average on the season, I think, is just under 41. percent uh, Again, I'm not looking at stats. I'm going all by this memory. And some of you guys have better brains than me, and you can tell me exactly what it was. But they hit 37 and a half percent of their free throws. Um, they turned the ball over 10 times. Like I said, getting into double digits, you're starting to play with, with fire a little bit. Um, some of the turnovers were ugly, sloppy stuff that you can clean up easy. Some of them were like, man, what the heck was that? Just that simple. Lance Jones had two. Zach Eady had two. Uh, Braden Smith had zero turnovers. Braden Smith, uh, <laughs> this is the thing. It's such a quiet game Braden Smith had tonight. And, we, and I said the big three, if you want to say big three, if we're going to have a d- line of demarcation, an easy one is double-digit points. So Purdue had a big three tonight, and it was a little bit different. The big three was different, and it was Trey Kaufman Wren just absolutely grinding his way to 11 points, seven boards, two assists. He did have two two turnovers, like I said a second ago. And then Braden Smith, quietly, calmly. He missed a few shots. He missed, he missed six three-pointers. He missed six three-pointers. But he had 11 points. He had 10 assists. He had a steal. He had a block. He had five boards. And Zach Eady. This is a fun stat line, and I'll tell you why here in a second. If you kept your CBS on uh, until just before I got on live, you saw this, but it's noteworthy to me. He had 30 points, 21 boards, two assists, three blocks. 30 and 20, though. That mark specifically. We haven't seen that since 1995, and then before that it was 1975 in the NCAA tournament. Stuff like that matters because it shows you just how good it is. It gives you markers that there have been a lot of great players who have gone through the NCAA tournament, and they couldn't reach that mark. And I don't think that's one of those ESPN stats where you're saying uh, 30 points, 20 rebounds, and um, uh, four shoelace coming untied. You know, some stupid thing where they're just digging so deep to find some unusual subset. 30 and 20 is pretty easy to find. Even in the olden days where the, the, the stats, you'd have to dig them up in a book. That's a great game. It's a noteworthy game. Uh, if you look at some other things that Purdue could have done better, one of them, one of the big ones I would say is uh, Mason Gillis didn't get involved on the scoring side of things. He played a lot of minutes. Let's see. I, I brought this up on, t- uh, on purpose because I thought it was interesting. The, the, the minutes played. Purdue did a good job, and Painter did a good job keeping the mileage off these guys, keeping them fresh. And I think he's going to try to do that when he can. Obviously, it's going to get really real quickly. Hopefully, it doesn't get stressful next game, but it could. If you ring, remember back to Carson Edwards' run, run in 2019, Purdue went through Villanova in that second round. And Purdue ran through that team because Edwards got on and Villanova didn't have an answer. 
Does Purdue have the capability to do that? Yeah, absolutely they do. But it's going to take one of the guys just bombing threes. It's not just going to be Edie because you come, you're going to score in bunches and it'll loosen things up. Um, if not, it's going to be this workmanlike grind a team down type of victory where the game stays close until hopefully early in the second half and then they, they push out. One thing we haven't seen in a while that I would like to see, because it's probably been, a, what, three, four weeks since Purdue was at a game where they just got out and punched a team in the mouth early in the, in the game. And they were doing that a lot early in the season. But I think I'd like to see one of those. I'm sure you would too, just to, so you can take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath so you're like, okay, game's not over, but but this is a good sign of things to come. In the minutes, again, Trey Kaufman ran 22 minutes. Zach Eady kept his minutes in check below his season average, 31. Braden Smith at 34. Fletch Lawyer, 25. And if you look at, Painter's been doing this. He's been taking some minutes away from Lawyer. N- not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. But he's been taking the minutes away from Lawyer, and he's been giving them to Cam Heidi and Colvin. Colvin played, 20, er, played 12 minutes. Cam Heidi played 22 Gillis played 18, so significant minutes, and first played four, quiet four minutes. But I thought those minutes really mattered because of the way Purdue was able to play the game. Purdue didn't have to stress because they played a team that they were better than, and they acted like they were better than them. They didn't do it by the thing that we all wanted to see was, okay, take advantage. When you had the opportunity to knock down big threes, Purdue didn't really do that. How they did this is they just scrapped the hell out of Grambling on the glass. And it wasn't just Zach Eady. Like I said, Trey Kaufman had seven boards. Braden Smith had five boards. Heidi had three. Uh, Colvin had three. Colvin also had one of the best blocks of the game. My goodness, all of you guys and girls who wanted to see Colvin play, and we were waiting, what's the deal? Why don't we see more Colvin? I said, it's got to be defense. It's got to be defense. Paint doesn't like when a guy that talented isn't playing defense. And we are seeing a very, very different Miles Colvin the last two weeks. It's not that Painter's just been like, okay, I'll give you some minutes now. He's earned it. He's earned it, and uh, that's awesome to see. He missed a three really badly. Let's see. Hey, Colvin didn't have any points. He was uh, one for two free throw, but he's 0 for two from three. One of them looked like it was dead eye. Like You're like, that is a beautiful shot, and it clanged off the back of the room, clanked off the back of the room. Um, let's see. Lawyer, almost to that double-digit mark, eight points, uh, just two boards. Uh, no assists. So relatively quiet game, but I think I think teams are going to do this. They're saying, we're going to take one guy away, the guy that we think we can take away. And if they listen to boiled sports, which I'm sure every coach that Purdue's going to play loves the boiled sports post games and the quick cast and the handsome hours. But what I've said over and over is lawyer is the key to success in the tournament, meaning if you can see lawyer playing at his best, big game Fletch. If you can see that, Purdue is going to have a run in them in the tournament, a long run. Well, today they didn't need it, right? Lance Jones, like I said, I'd like to see him knock down some of those shots. He, if, In case you're wondering, his first three was blocked. It was tipped, and then Lawyer, I think, or not Lawyer, Edie pulled down the, the air ball and dunked it home. A little bit different than last year when teams tried to, especially in the NCAA tournament, when teams tried to take away Purdue's uh, perimeter guys, um, they really, they then they were bodying Edie. Edie wasn't having any of it tonight. He wasn't having any of it. Let's see. Purdue, big, another big stat. Like I said, rebounds. Purdue crushed Grambling on the board. Uh, 48 overall rebounds to 23. But the big one, um, if you look at this, the big one, the offensive boards Purdue had. Is that right? Yeah. 18 boards. 18 boards. So they extended possessions. And at the same time, Grambling didn't get many second looks. They just had five. So that's, that's a pretty good game. And Purdue... All the I said 30, 30 victories is good, but being 1-0 and in the tournament is better. And so uh, Patrick Gottschall is the first person here says, BTFU, yep, I think you guys are all feeling uh, good like I am, maybe taking a deep breath, maybe enjoying your favorite beverage. For you, it might be Gatorade. For me tonight, I've got an old-fashioned. Got an old-fashioned we made with, um, uh, oh, my dad's got a Kurs, a banquet beer. Right over to the left of me. This is the second podcast in a row for my dad and I where he's been live in the studio. So that's fun. That's fun. Uh, Jonathan Michael says, boiler up. Mark Garrity, they came, uh, overcame the slugfest, and it was a slugfest. Derek Mulliken uh, says, let's go. Chris R., boiler up. Oh, I had a funny text <laughs> from, from our pal, pal Derek Schultz at halftime. His, his wife is a big Purdue fan, or big IU fan. Big IU fan. They're both IU alums. But she's a big IU fan. She talked trash a little bit 
and I'm not going to, I'm not going to put the whole conversation public because he didn't give me permission, but Derek's a good sport anyway, but I'm not going to throw his wife under the bus. I'm not going to tell you about how she said something biased towards IU and Derek just shut her down. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get in the details, but I thought it was a funny conversation and Derek let me peek around the, behind the curtain there, which was fun. Brent Williams, boiler up, Midwest choker, uh, where's the ice? I mean, is this going to, we're going to do this every time now? I, I mean, I did, I gave you the clinking. I gave you the clinking. Uncle Steve, if you're listening, here's some extra clinking. And there we go. There's the ice, Midwest toker. But I I clinked the ice. I did it. I did. I clinked. Uh, Okabu13 says, woohoo! I think that's a happy noise. Derek Mulliken says, Jones and Gillis were uh, rough. Hope it was an anomaly. ED pure dominance. I'll tell you why it's an anomaly. This has been proven out over the season what these guys really are. Here's the thing. Lance is not a great... <laughs> Utah State almost just got a ball right on the groin from a rebound. Um, Utah, uh, um, uh, Mason Gillis is a good three-point shooter, okay? Um, Lance is a spark plug. Lance is a streaky shooter. Lance, I think, if I could say I am close to any game on Purdue's court, my old basketball game when I used to play with Jay Money in college and some of you guys, uh, Mesmer and uh, the Bet Tags and um, company, Al Brock, um, my game was streaky, but I was a spark plug, man. I brought the energy, and I think that's what Lance Jones does. He brings the energy. He brings a pace that, that some guys can't match. So I, I like that Lance Jones ball game. Um, so he's not consistent. So you could say it's anomaly or it's just what Lance does, but Lance, I said this to my dad right at the end of the game. I said, I think we'll see a big Lance game in this tournament. I don't know when it is. The trick is you got to play some games, right? you got to play some games for it to happen. got to get in a bit of a groove. The big perspective, I keep saying this, and if you talk to Coach Painter, just tell him three two-game tournaments. That's the trick to the NCAA tournament. That's what all the great coaches do. Krzyzewski used to say that. It's just three two-game tournaments. It's easy. When you break it down that way, it's easy. You can, you can say, okay, we can do this. And Purdue is really, really good at short tournaments. We've seen it in November over and over. But long tournaments, it's a harder thing. It's a tougher thing mentally, and Paint needs to find that. That's the big thing. That is what Purdue needs to get over is paints nerves, right? And you need to have a guy help him get over that, just like Klein and Carson Edwards did it years ago. Adam P. says, feels pretty good. I agree. Um, uh, Pat Gottschall says, I was never nervous. Largest margin victory, NCAA tournament since 1998. This is a good stat, Pat. Um, now let's go win the whole damn thing. Right on. Chris Harder, my pal, says, let's go... Chris, hope you're well. Uh, Frail Hammer says, what a first round game should be like. Word. Adam, uh, good you're on here. Glad you're here. Hope I'm on the wall at AJ's right now. Appreciate you tuning in. Boiler up. Hammer down, sir. T Rick says, BTFU, EDU 3020, like the third or fourth guy. In, yep, yep. I, I got to that. Uh, Vince Moster says, uh, 30 and 21. Big game. Wow. And by the way, he, he was on pace for more than that in the first half. He was on pace for more than that. And again, Purdue was merciful. Ted Berkey says, prepare for Sunday, and that is something that you and I should always do. I always put my clothes out the night before. This week, I'm serving at church early, so i got to get up early. I, I'm sure that's what you're talking about, because I can't help our boilers win. But I can pray for it. I don't. I, you can debate that if God really cares about that prayer or not. I always say, God has time for all the prayers, guys. He can, he can handle that one, too. Uh, Ted Berkey says, prepare for Sunday again. T-Rick says, uh, got to see how fun this team will be next year. Yes, we did uh, with that Heidi fast break and Elliot. Yeah, that was really fun. And I said to my dad, when Edie was sitting, what I wanted to see, and Paint, again, doesn't ask me, neither does PJ, but I, what I wanted to see is Purdue turn the pace way up. And even if you didn't get a bunch of points on the board, start running on them and wear them out even more. Grambling was very tired, especially underneath from trying to uh, man up with a seven foot four, three hundred ten pound specimen. Behemoth. Behemoth. Whatever word you want to use for Zach Eady. And I was like, now wear their guards out with some pace. And Purdue didn't really do that. They ran a little bit, but they're going to be a very different looking team. And let's hope we don't get to see that for five games, huh? Um, Brian T says, uh, praying for you, Ken. Uh, you got this. Use this time to draw close to him. Uh, Brian. And I, I'm glad you brought it up. Ken, if you're listening, you've got tons of boilers thinking about you and praying for you. Like I said, I don't think Ken and I have the exact same faith. But I can tell you, I believe the 
prayer is powerful. I believe it's effective. And I'm praying for my pal Ken out in uh, Oregon. Uh, Ryan Michael Anthony says, Ryan Michael Anthony Harrington, I want to give respect to the name. Hammer down, take it one game at a time. Jute, Jim Huguenard says, Huguenard, oh my gosh, Huguenard. I, I, I've, done a, I've done better, Jim. I apologize. First round demons exercise tonight. Great team win. Brian T. Braden looked like his legs were fine, and they are. Even though Van Gundy said that that leg covering was suspect, Van Gundy doesn't know a damn thing because Braden Smith always wears, it's, a, it's one of those hexagonal padding, um, uh, it's a lycra, a spandex um, sleeve, and he wears it to keep his shins from banging into other people. Uh, the reason he does that is because his legs are a little shorter than the average guy that bangs knees. And when you're a little bit shorter, I can relate with this, you don't bang knees, you bang shins. Bang shin. It also hurts. Um, let's see. Albuquerque Boiler says, Hail Purdue friends. Albuquerque Boilers, I think, is one of the people on uh, Twitter that was talking about you guys need to connect. Boilermakers in Albuquerque, let's do it. Let's hear about it. Tell me about it in on the Twitter feed. Tell me about when you guys get to meet Stephen Albuquerque. Maybe Chris, my uh, college roommate in Albuquerque. You guys need to get together. Purdue West. Uh, not like the old Purdue West that failed to keep a business down and have movie theaters like when I was there, but Purdue way west in Albuquerque. Um, Vincent Mostert, first half was a little rough. Second half was solid. It was better than solid. It was a ton of fun. I know a lot of people were upset with the little bad things, the little details not going well. By the way, Wisconsin right now is down 13 to... JMU, JMU, the same team that beat Michigan State back in East Lansing in December. I couldn't be happier about that result right now. I couldn't be happier. Greg Gard, you hack. All right. Um, Pat Gottschall says, this is an interesting game. Heidi and Colvin on the floor. Same time a lot, actually. Uh, Morton came in very late. Uh, pain is evolving. I agree. It's good to see. Um, I don't think, my wife said, do you think, do you think uh, Morton is bothered by that? I don't see it that way. I don't think he's that guy. I think he's pretty happy to be on these teams. this team. I think he likes his teammates a lot. I don't get any of that body language stuff from him, and uh, that's awesome to see. Uh, but Morton is clearly uh, in uh, – I used to use hockey terms last year when they were you know playing five guys and subbing five. The second line comes in, and then he comes in with the third line right now, but that's okay. Stay ready. Stay hungry, Ethan. Uh, Chris Harder says, Seth Davis is trying to be uh, – Trying to be Purdue, make me laugh. Yeah, Seth Davis says he's a Purdue guy now, which, sure, uh, because he thinks they're really good and he wants to be on the bandwagon. So let's hope uh, he can enjoy the ride for a little bit. But, yeah, Seth Davis, that ain't real. Uh, Adam again says, if Colvin makes the, that jam, the roof would have blown off. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, my wife, I had split over to my office, and I was listening to their reaction because they were about a second and a half ahead on their stream. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. That would have been awesome. Um, Chris Kinder says, we have receipts, Seth. Yes, we all remember what Seth has said about Purdue in the past. If you've been on social media, and yeah, we do have receipts. We know the truth about Seth Davis. Joe Inslee says, never a doubt, not tonight. Joe, uh, John Fry says, money came off the back about four minutes into the second half. Money came off the back. What's that mean? I, is, that a, is that a betting thing? I really don't know. I'm sorry. I'm so naive when it comes to any of that. Money came off the back. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Kevin Albuquerque says, uh, to Stan Van Gundy, there are no fouls. No, not on Purdue, at least. No kidding, Kevin. Uh, Rob White says, never thought I'd be so happy to be a 16 seed. Yeah, Purdue fans needed this more than the team, honestly. The team knows what they are. The team needed it just to say, okay, I'll move on. By the way, Houston is absolutely shellacking Longwood right now, too. Um, Connecticut handled their business. So the three real dominant number ones all year, um, look like they have everything right where it needs to be. Uh, they are as good as advertised. They are better than the rest of the nation. Tennessee also handled somebody. There aren't there haven't been a lot of the games like that where teams have just really manhandled somebody. So the good teams are showing up and showing out right now. It's good to see, and it's really good that produce one of them. Ed Albany says, Gillis did not do well and started doing his pump fakes. Hope he gets back mental, uh, mentally soon. That pump fake, I think you're referencing, was it the second half on the left in the left corner. That was a smart pump fake, in my opinion. And at that point, Purdue had, had was in cruise a little bit. So maybe you're thinking about another one you could tell me about, but um, I'm not too worried about it yet. I'm not too worried about it. One thing I thought was interesting, maybe you did too and you heard this. If you were in uh, Banker's Life, I was not. I don't have the money to do it. I didn't 
I didn't buy tickets ahead. I thought that would be some weird sort of jinx things that I would do to Purdue if I bought the tickets too early. I'll be real honest. So then as I said, okay, maybe I'll go down to Indianapolis. I mean, it's 20 minutes away from my house. And I looked at tickets. I was like, are you kidding me? You know, these tickets are $470 for up in the nosebleeds. No, thank you. I can't do that. Um, I say Purdue fans are somewhat logical. I put myself in that that group right now just because I was like, I can't legitimize that. But the Purdue fans showed out, but we didn't, uh, it wasn't our best effort, I'd say, as Purdue fans. So all of you who has to have tickets for the session on Sunday, bring it, make it loud, make it uncomfortable for the opposition. I think there are a lot of IU fans posing as other team fans tonight, posing as Grambling fans, which I'm sure that wasn't believable for a guy from Southern Indiana wearing a Grambling shirt. I don't know if there's a lot of that. But I do think there's a lot of cheering for Grambling. And that's why I hate going to Indianapolis and going to Banker's Life. Hate it. Hate going to that place. All right. Uh, T-Rex said, could anyone have guessed Van Gundy could be worse at something than he (laughs) was as a coach? Uh, Good point. Elliot Krul says, uh, Crail, Crail says, I think I got Crail right. Uh, Enjoyed your content and analysis the last few years. Thank you, Elliot. I do not plan to retire anytime soon. But who knows? I mean, it sounds like you're giving me a go away. Go ahead. uh, uh, Going home, whatever. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. For those of you who don't know, this is really interesting. I think it's interesting. So I've been doing quick casts for a couple years. I used to do a, um, a, a really short segment in my old house on Purdue football. I try, I, I've experimented with the, the uh, content and how I do it, um, but I really got very consistent with the basketball content and the post games being all video starting, I think, last season. And... It, it's grown a lot, which is great because of you guys and you guys enjoy this, which is awesome. I think it's a great place to meet. Glad we all meet here. Um, but we've been doing this, like I said, we've been doing this almost as long as my son has been alive. My son is a senior at Fisher's High School. <laughs> uh, he's going to Purdue next year. He, I, I, if you guys didn't see that video, that's not a bit. That's really my son. But he was like six months old when we started Boiled Sports. And I always say we're old enough that we were on Blogger's website. Blogger's, um, uh, I think, Google, old, Google's old platform. And we just wrote. And this week, Jay showed a little bit of that, which I thought was fun. He had written content, and it's really good. If you just like analysis, if you like level-headed research, we used to do that, but we were good at mixing in opinion. He and I went and reviewed some of our first um, posts, which was fun this week. But go go read those. I mean, I know it's a lost art reading a five-minute article, but I thought it was really good. Really good analysis by Jay. <laughs> Sorry, my allergies are horrible, guys. Um, uh, but I appreciate that again, Elliot. Uh, Judith Johnson says, how many turnovers for us? Ten. Uh, ten turnovers. Solar says, dude pulled Zach to the ground. No question, they kept playing. But Zach is a big boy. Uh, not only can he take it, but he'd gladly take calls. Yeah, Zach took a beating tonight. Zach's arms were bloodied because of that first foul, which is the one. That's the picture on this post today. It was a guy grabbing Zach around, giving him a big hug because he thought he was a, a big sweetheart. Zach's like that, so I get it. You want to hug him. Um, yeah, I, that stuff, boy, makes me mad. Uh, check the boxes tonight. Word. Um, Joseph Sasser says, boiler up. Man, those casters were horrible. They were. You got a varsity app, I'm telling you. Use your Bluetooth and varsity app. They're a mean combination. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Cool getting a glimpse of what they'll be like next year. I agree. Colvin's a beast. Colvin's going to be great. Heidi is great. Um, having Lawyer and Smith back will be great. Having TKR back and First back, that'll, these are all really good things. And then bring these freshmen in. But first, let's go to Phoenix. Let's make that happen. Larry, Larry Corman, I have looked ahead way too much tonight. Larry Corman, first half, Purdue was obviously feeling the pressure of last year's loss, I agree. Looked better in the second half. Gillis worries me. He does not worry me. I know some of you are very worried. I would not worry about Mason Gillis, and I mean that. I think you're going to see Mason Gillis uh, do what he does. I don't think he is uh, in his own head right now at all. Uh, Rob White says TCU. That's a prediction for Rob. Rob says TCU. I think I think it's going to be Utah State. I don't know. I there's some really neat analysis by Jay Wright talking about who do you want to play, and he's like, you know, if you look ahead and you have a, a lower seed playing a team that you know like that's. You know, got really got a chip on their shoulder and they're hot because their conference tournament and all that. You don't really want that. And he said, you don't want a team in rhythm and you don't want a team that's really good that can physically match up with it. I guess what he was saying is you really don't want to play that next game. <laughs> you want to win and then just waltz to a championship. 
But it, Heat, by the way, Jay Wright gets what we get, which is like, okay, you're like, okay, which one do I want? I don't want either one. Uh, Randall Kendig says, Seth Davis has a lot of really great things to say about Purdue, ED, the fan base, et cetera, after the game, almost teared up. Okay, Randall, yes, he did. But Seth Davis, these other Boilermakers in these comments can tell you about Seth Davis. He's a bit of a fraud. Uh, Zachary Welch, I mean, I love nice words being said about Purdue, and I, I get caught up at that at times. And there's another, there's a, a non-Purdue uh, uh, video blog, whatever you want to call it, streaming streaming group said some really nice things about Purdue, but they've also said them, said them things that really pissed me off about the fan base. And I got the point, I said, I'm, I'm not subscribing to you guys. I'm done. I can't take it anymore. And I, I felt pretty good, pretty liberated about it. I don't like people BSing me. I don't like people trying to schmoo schmooze me, and I've had enough. So I'm circling the wagons is what I'm saying. And if you're with me, you're with me. Let's go. Um, Aaron Fett says, agreed. Uh, Mason was really off. Hope he's, he's okay. He's okay, Aaron. It's okay. Uh, Benny says, so proud of our boys. Kelvin and Heidi look great. At Albany says, Wisconsin is down seven points. I don't know. It's more than that now. Now they're down 13. I'm in a time machine, guys. Uh, Jack Stuckey says, rooting against Wisconsin's game. I'm with you. Andrew Wide says, post game uh, was an um, homage to Edie Painter, Purdue fan base. That's what you're talking about with Seth and company. Yeah, they, they talk a lot. Here's the other thing. If you watch this, there's a lot of talking from a lot of people who don't know what to say other than, Stretch. We gotta fill some time. They've added 15 minutes to the to the tip-off time in this one. By the way, TCU's up just three now on Utah State in the first half. Uh, Randall Kinnick says one more thing. Uh, they get the the all-time record. One more win. They get the all-time record. There you go. So that 31 wins. Uh, while this team as individuals has shattered a lot of records in your in, in the books. Yeah, I agree. So there you go. There's the answer. One more win. 31 wins all time will be the most for a Purdue team. Um, let's see, Ted Burke, he says, ties for the most wins, 30. There you go. Uh, Tim, Tim, as Jay says, TKR was uh, off the first half. TKR was busting his ass in the first half. And I would, I would challenge, I don't know if you're saying he was off, like he wasn't scoring. This is where I'd say, listen to Coach Paint and what he says. Coach Paint talks about scoring does not define your success as a player. Uh, TKR was kicking ass on the boards and really absorbing a lot of contact. Um, a couple of you uh, fellow Boilers maybe have seen TKR play in high school and how much quicker he was. He's made a decision to get bigger and stronger, probably at the behest of Matt Painter, saying, okay, we need you to be bigger and stronger. You're going to take a beat in the Big Ten. You look at his trunks. Man, his legs are beastly. Um, so he may not move quite as quick, but he is still quick, and he can put teams on an absolute turntable. Um, he's really skilled, um, and he works really hard, and he's a really different bird in the best possible way. I mean, I love this guy. I love his temperament and his personality, and I love the fact that he's um, taken this role in stride and said, you know what, I'm going to learn from this big fella next to me. Uh, that was a lot. Um, let's see. Albuquerque Boiler says, great showing from the crowd. Thanks uh, for properly representing the geographically separated Boilers. Yeah, I think you can do better. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to part ways from my, my friends in Albuquerque. I just think um, I think Purdue fans can even be louder and better and have more of a home field advantage like they did versus Arizona early in the year in that same venue. And in Colorado says, yeah, Kevin Bryant says, Albuquerque Boiler meetup needs to happen. Yes, you guys need to do that. We have all these great things. Go find a place, and uh, I don't know if you guys can do it. If you can meet at a bar and watch Purdue, you're better than I am. I can't do it. Like, literally, I, I had people over today to watch games, and I said, all right, everybody, 7 o'clock, got to get out of here. <laughs> That's not a bit. You can ask them. I don't know if any of them are on here. Some of them were here. Uh, one of them is an Indiana fan. He's a great guy. He's one of the best IU fans that I know. He brought his little sons over. We had a great time watching basketball, eating donuts. <laughs> the kids love they come to the place this is where they eat, get to eat donuts because their their dad brought the donuts I didn't supply the donuts I don't fry donuts uh, anyway stupid sidebar Russell Collins says it was obvious that Zach was backing off in the first half so he wouldn't get in foul trouble yep this is Painter's MO this is what Painter wants Zach to do stay out of foul trouble don't get don't get fouled at the same time draw fouls Boiler Bugle says, miss the written stuff. Best written Purdue fan blog, in my opinion. So, Boiler Bugle, you should have gotten, gotten that itch scratched a little bit this week. I don't really write all that, that often uh, because I'm doing this. And I have five to seven words written on paper. I don't have any today, by the way. There's no notes today. 
Ruffians about who's my pal, my pal on Twitter says uh, Jay's no Carson Cunningham uh, with a pen and paper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Carson, Carson, that was pretty funny. And Carson, Carson really, Carson Cunningham wrote a great piece this week. I loved it. I thought it was a longer form. It was nice. If you haven't read that on Golden Black, it's about the Purdue basketball family. It's great. Really great. Um, I'm sweating, guys. Um, let's see. Patrick also added me here, says, I've been reading Boiled Sports since almost the very beginning. We are our contemporaries. Uh, AAE 97 here, 90, class of 97, industrial design, liberal arts here. Sorry, I'm liberal arts. Um, so I've always related to you and this BS team. I appreciate that, Pat. That's awesome. Um, it's, it's a long time. By the way, 557 live views right now. That's awesome. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Um, Crimson Permanent Assurance. The Crimson Permanent Assurance says, what the heck was up with Gillis? Okay, guys, it's okay. Everything's fine. Everybody was worried about Mason. It's okay. Everything's gonna be great, and Mason's gonna—he's gonna—he's gonna recover, and he's gonna do big things this turn. It's gonna be awesome. I have faith. It's gonna be okay. Um, uh, who's Johnny? Says Colvin and Heidi are so athletic. Yeah, they're tons of fun. Gentry, uh, actually, Ed Albany says I want TCU when Purdue played in. I watched TCU when Purdue played in Toronto. TCU coach seemed like an angry dude. If we play them, we should beat them. Okay, TCU's coach. I said this the other day. Um, he's a lot like Gene Cady, not because he, he's, he looks like my father-in-law. That's one thing that's interesting to me about him. Um, but he, he, he's very good at preparing teams during the regular season. He's not, I don't think he's quite the motivator Gene Cady was and, um, for the Purdue program, but he, he squeezes everything he can out of the talent he's got. Um, Dixon, Jamie Dixon, but his team's fizzle in the tournament. So if they get past, uh, Utah State is a legit good team. Good for them. There's some weird things that are showing themselves. Number one, the SEC. Goodness gracious that they looked weak. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Big 12, are they as strong as they have advertised it? Is the Mountain West a little weaker or are they underseeded? That's the thing uh, LBD and I talked about. I think they're underseeded a little bit. Um, Greg Henning said, it's a good night. Yes, it is. Uh, Daniel Nelson says, all you could ask for tonight was a stress-free win, and we got that for the last 15 minutes. Hardest game uh, we have to play before the Elite Eight, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I. all these games are going to be tough for, for me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I would like to get – I don't even know how to get in the mental space where I feel good about watching games. Um, I don't know how to do it, um, but I would love to do it. And um, – yeah, I, I, man, I hope, I just hope this is a long run and afterwards I can say, okay, I'm okay now. I'm all better. But right now, uh, I'm, I'm a mess uh, when I watch Purdue. Especially in games that matter. Okay. Um, uh, Albert, Kevin Albuquerque says, so you're getting better sleep down, boiler down. Did I say something I don't sleep? Did I say that? No. Okay, okay. I think I sleep pretty well. I sleep like a baby. I'm a guy with a pretty open conscience. I'm not guilty guy. Um, um, not that that's the only reason it keeps people from, from sleeping, but I sleep pretty well. Um, I would like to sleep about a half an hour longer than I do every day. I'm one of those people. Just give me a, two more snooze bars and I'll be, I'll be golden. Um, but I stay up too late watching basketball <laughs> this time of year, and I love it. I absolutely love this time of year. I love the fact there's so much happening. I love the fact that you can stay up, and they're on my schedule now where people are doing things till 1.30 in the morning. Last night I was up till 2.30. Um, but anyway, Daniel Nelson says, oh, you, oh, we already did that. Okay, Crimson Permanent Insurance says, please explain how uh, the F1 against Zach shouldn't have been an F2. Yeah, I by the rule, that looks like an F2 to me. I don't have a problem with it being an F1. I'm just happy they made that call. Because how many times have we seen something reviewed and they come back like, oh, no, just a foul. Or it gets turned over and it hurts Purdue somehow. So at least they got the F1. I'm not going to let bigger. I'm as a, as a beggar, I'm not going to be a chooser. It probably should have been F2. But, but is it within the framework of the game? It never is. It's never a basketball play. So I'm with you. Uh, Greg Henning says, I'm in Albuquerque too. Oh my gosh, Boiled Sports is where the Albuquerqueans, I don't know what you guys say. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but where they come to meet. 
Ironically, this is funny, and I don't think he ever listens or watches. My college roommate never comes on my live blogs. I'll send him links. He doesn't even react to them. He's in Albuquerque, and he is a Purdue alum in the class of 95. December of, December of 95. Huh? Year before you. Yeah. But no, but the December, so year and a half. December of 95, and he's in Albuquerque. So uh, Zach Welch says NCA screwed up getting fans, uh, and most fans weren't there for the tip. Lots of weren't, weren't there around the 13-minute mark. My buddy Ron Gable, who, who watches this usually, um, he was sending us a live video like five minutes before tip-off, and they were letting the fans back in. Yeah, they butchered this pretty good. This is part of the reason I was happy to be in my living room. That and my wallet was thicker uh, because it would have been a package deal. It would have been me and LBD, um, and that's a lot of monies. Um, so, yes, they screwed it up, but that's not surprising. NCAA does a lot to screw things up. Um, guys, you should, uh, Ed Alvin, says you should connect with the local Purdue alumni clubs. He's talking about the Albuquerque guys. If you don't have one around there, start one. Uh, easy for Ed to say. Ed runs, uh, the greatest, um, gummy, gummy bear factory in America. <laughs> See, that's a lie. Ed Albanese is not the owner of the Albanese uh, gummy bear fortune. Um, we've talked about it. Uh, who's, who's Johnny says Jay Wright said, uh, Tonight, Purdue will be at least in the Final Four. Guys, I got to tell you, when I, I don't know about you, it literally warms my heart, and I get a little, like, I can feel, like, tears welling up when team, people talk that positively about Purdue, especially somebody like Jay Wright, who I absolutely respect what he says. And so then I just want to ch- catch myself and say, why do you get that way? What's wrong with you? What is your problem, Dowd? And you guys can say that, too, now that I've really said it. I thought we were in... The circle of trust, the tree of trust. Anish Ramaswamy, uh, longtime listener, uh, also content first provider, says, first time, long time. Quick question. How do you stay so handsome? Well, it's uh, it's not easy, number one. Uh, there are many, many things I do. One of them uh, is after a victory, I'll have a bourbon. That's one thing. The other thing is hydrate, girls. Um, no, I don't. I'm not a big carrying around my Stanley thermos. I don't do that. Uh, but thank you. Uh, Anish, the, it's it's a rigorous campaign, you know. It usually involves seventy thirty beef, as you know, Anish. <laughs> so anyway, that's a inside joke. Okay, Daniel Daniel Chumbly says, "Why does Painter keep starting Kaufman Wren? Don't think he is playing that great." Okay, so Daniel, again, I would encourage you to watch Kaufman Wren and what he's doing without the ball. Second thing, Painter has talked about this all year. He wanted the double post to create problems. I talked to my dad about this today. I have disagreed with this lineup all year, but I think Kaufman Wren needs to be in there for a certain number of minutes because he's so good and he's so strong and he's such a changeup. But the whole idea of having Edie and Wren do high-low post, that's the idea, that if you're going to have two big men in there collapsing on Edie that you have Ren go in there and feast. The problem is a lot of times is Edie is working to get the low post, which clogs the middle and takes away Ren's strength, which is getting to the basket. I'm sure paint sees the problem that I see because he's much smarter than me when it comes to basketball, not to fashion. I can tell you, yeah, paint's got, yeah. You think fashion, you think paint's got me beat up? Oh my goodness, that hurts my own dad. Uh, I don't think uh, Paint has me beat on fashion. But anyway, uh, um, let's see. Uh, Jason D says, cue the Carson calm down GIF for everyone worried about Mason. Yes. Cue it up, spin it out. That's exactly right. Um, Let's see. Good conversation here. I'm not going to butt in. Um, Andy in Colorado says that F1 was super close to being F2. I agree. Let's see if we can skip down a little bit. Uh, I don't even know what that means, so I'm going to keep going. Daniel Nelson, I haven't seen a comment from him, uh, says, anybody else see Seth Davis running his mouth saying Grambling State is a more athletic fairly Dickinson? He can go shove it. He's a bum. Um, it's funny. Seth Davis has offended and and really made a lot of Purdue fans <laughs> happy tonight. Seth Davis will talk out of both sides of the mouth. That's what that's what he does. Um, but, yeah, uh, he, he is a bum. One thing that I want somebody to hold accountable, by the way, accountability in the media died with COVID, when, I mean, in the COVID era. It just simply did. I don't care which type of media. And so you have a lot of people saying a lot of stupid crap, never apologizing, never saying they're wrong ever, right? But really that became very in vogue during the COVID era because a lot of people were on the news all the time talking out of their ass. 
It didn't matter if it was about sports or anything else. And so you have guys in studio, guys and girls telling us, the one you should be mad about is Wally Serbiak. He talked so much trash about Purdue before they played Grambling, saying this is just like Fairleigh Dickinson. He wants to be the hot take guy. He wants to be the guy that's on the videos that are made in, on Instagram and YouTube. Well, good job, Wally, because you're going to have Purdue fans coming after you because they're pissed if they're anything like me. Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, Monkey Suit says Craig from across the hall. I, there's there's some I, my, there's a lot. Of, there's good conversation coming. That's what this is all about, by the way. It's not about me reading your comments. It's about you talking to one another. Still good. Joe Ansley says Zach is on a mission. This is the year. See you all in Phoenix. So Joe has already packed his bags and is hitchhiking to Phoenix. That's awesome. Um, my plan, and I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to do that because I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But, yeah, I want to go to Phoenix, too. I will say that. And I plan on doing something there. Um, and Zach is on a mission. If you watch his post-game comments, it's very funny. He tries to be a little lighthearted. And he says, we're doing what we're supposed to do now. And then his face changed. He was like, happy, happy. Oh, look, I'm talking to the media. He turned, and it looked like he was ready to go kill somebody. If you can, watch the post-game interview with Edie. Watch him turn and leave. That's all I'm saying. Watch the micro-anger. I don't believe in microaggressions. But watch the micro-anger when he turns and he leaves that interview. It's awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, Greg Henning says, totally boiler down. You... Uh, you just had some 2001 carry, carry quad hallmates randomly find each other over here. That is awesome. This is this is my thing. I love this. I love that. Bunch of 2001 carry quad mates connecting here, right here. That's awesome. In the shadows of the boiled sports content. Love it. Love it. Fellow carry quad guy here, by the way. I, they used to say quad dog. It always annoyed me because I didn't like it. My dad also lived in Kerry Quad. His name is on a plaque on the door. And is that southeast or yeah. southeast? My name is on a plaque in the door on the fourth floor at Kerry Quad. My name is on the door. I lived with two different individuals because one graduated and then the other one came in. But my name's on the door. They did that as I begged them because I really graduated out of a room when I was RA over in Tarkington. And I asked, I said, that's where I want to be. But my room, with one other roommate, I think has had as many as five individuals in the last couple of years living in it. I had a good deal. And that's part of the reason I stayed in the dorms. I loved it. Um, my friend, uh, Tim, who helped start this site, we, 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 he would go up to the fifth floor and he ran a radio show that had the uh, broadcasting strength of a hairdryer, pretty much. You couldn't hear it <laughs> past the fourth floor. But we'd go up when he was uh, doing his uh, his his broadcasting and talk to him and walk out on the roof and carry quad. If you've never done it, I highly suggest it. Smoke a cigar on the uh, river stones on the roof of carry. If you get a chance, uh, that's if any of you understand that, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Sam Hagerman says, what an upset guys. Huge win for the program. Upset. What am I saying? J money proud. F yes. Ed Albany says J money proud FDU alum. Yes, he is. J money got his masters at Fairleigh Dickinson. And we made a joke about that a lot coming into that, but maybe that's all been erased from the internets. Um, he is an FDU alum. He does not claim any fandom of the FDU. <laughs> he has no loyalty to Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, but yes, he did go there. This is true. Uh, Jay Money is actually a very successful guy, as is Anish. I mean, I'm telling you guys, one thing that, if you don't know this, I'm the schlep of the group of Boiled Sports. These guys are really sharp, um, really smart group of guys. Uh, it's so nice to have a niche on here. Uh, just checking in. Uh, he's a very smart dude. Colin Campbell says, uh, need uh, 10x lawyers, three-point attempts. Yeah, you, need, you do need 10 lawyer attempts. Lawyer led the Big Ten in three-point percentage this year, and he's much maligned by some of the Purdue fan base. I gave Lawyer a hard time when he wasn't producing, he wasn't looking for a shot. Lawyer needs to look for a shot, and when he gets the opportunity, bomb. Bombs away. He's the dude that makes this thing go. And I'm not saying he's like, you know, Smith is really the guy who, who starts the offense, gets everything kicked in. When Lawyer is on, it is a different Purdue team. It's a different Purdue team. And we're going to see that in this run, I believe. Uh, Kevin Bryant says he was a Tarkington resident as well. Uh, so, yeah, so I started in Southeast 1 at Tarkington, or in Kerry Quad my first year. I was looking out across the way at the Pike House. Um, 
and um, and then and then I moved moved on up to the fourth floor in the gables. Um, so had the weird rooms with the, the really unusual shapes and they're a really sweet deal. Really sweet deal. Except my dad's was not. My dad's was as big as a shoebox. That is a tiny room. Same size. Yeah, it's the same size as this table. He's in, he's in front of him. So, yeah. Um, Fowler Courts. Vincent Moster says Fowler Courts and Wiley before going off campus. Most people went off campus because you're smart. And you didn't have... I'm telling you, having one of those giant rooms was the sweetest deal. And we didn't even pay that much more, did we? No. It was a good deal. It was different in the 90s. You didn't have the shortest of short uh, the shortage of rooms that my son is going to have to deal with. So, but he's in the Honors College, guys, so he gets a really nice dorm. They wouldn't have invited me to that party. There was no Honors College when I was there. So, they um, didn't even tell us about it. No, exactly. They're like, no, don't waste your time. You're not the guy. You're not that guy. All right. I think that's it for the night. That's a long, that's nearly a handsome hour post game. It is not a quick cast. 55 minutes is not quick, but I was reveling in this. And I got to tell you, um, I'm feeling better than I did a few hours ago. <laughs> no doubt about it. I'll say thanks to you guys all again. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here live. Thanks to my dad for being here live in the studio, watching the quad view on YouTube TV. Thanks to, um, Thanks to uh, Home Field Apparel. Thanks to AJ's and Adam for tuning in live. It's always good to have Adam here. And um, thanks to anybody who's in AJ's right now, if you're still listening to me, which is awesome. I'm sure you're like, what the who the hell is this guy? And why does he keep talking about AJ's? But yeah, Adam's a good dude. Um, and uh, yeah, if you if you are in AJ's right now, get the funnel cake fries. I don't think they're called fries. We talked about this the other night. I don't know what he said. He couldn't tell me what the name was right now. Get the funnel cake, whatever they are. If you have already like eaten straws. your meal. Yeah, they're like a straw. My dad says funnel cake straws. They are awesome. They taste better than anything at the Indiana State Fair. They're just as healthy as things at the fair. They are incredible. Um, he said they, they stopped calling them funnel cake fries because people asked if they had potato in them. There's no potato in them. No, they're, they're delicious, though. Good for you. Good for you. Good and good for you. Chock full of vitamins and minerals, boys and girls. Part of a healthy dinner. AJ's funnel cake snacks, dessert snacks. Um, yeah. Dad, do you have a, yeah. Do we have a discount code? I, yeah, I think we were trying to say about AJ's there's no discount code. But you got to yell boiled. Uh, Aaron Fetz says McCutcheon alum. Oh, so nearby. By the way, Todd Singer, I think, is a McCutcheon alum. Todd Singer, I want to say thanks publicly again. I don't think Todd is, is tuned in live here. I want to say thanks again to Todd. Todd gave me something very nice. He, he knew how to, to, to warm this, this fella's heart. Uh, very nice of him when I we got, to, got to meet Todd the other night. Uh, Todd in Mohill 93. That was awesome. His name's Maury. I don't know if I just told something I shouldn't. Uh, but um, it was fun. And I made a deal that I, I wasn't going to talk about, but I will. If Purdue goes to the Final Four, I'm going to head back to AJ's for a live broadcast sometime in the next few weeks. Maybe my dad will be here with me. I don't know. He was a good travel buddy with me last time. But I want to go back to AJ's and celebrate with Adam and company. And hopefully this time we have a bigger crowd. Because, I mean, like, I could tell many of you wanted to be there. <laughs> We're there in spirit. But we had... Crickets. It was a great group, though. It's a small group and a great group. It was awesome. Um, but I will be up there for spring game because uh, <laughs> football's coming. <laughs> They're already practicing. Um, your buddy Hudson Card has gained some weight, good weight, not like me. Um, he's put on some pounds of muscle, so you don't need to talk about that yet. Um, that's it. Um, hammer down, boys and girls. God bless you. Sleep well tonight, but before you do it, watch TCU and Utah State. It's 35-38 as I speak in the first half. Uh, James Madison is still up by 11 on the unlikable Wisconsin Badgers. Grand Canyon and St. Mary's, it's 13 to 9 early in the first half. That was a sexy upset for some of you. I don't respect uh, the West Coast Conference. I really don't respect uh, Gonzaga, but I don't respect West Coast Concert, com uh, Conference. And I do respect Grand Canyon. They're gritty. Dude, they mess people up almost every year in the tournament, and they might do it again this year. Because I think many of you have them as like a dark horse to get to the final eight, final four. I'd like to see Grand Canyon win that one, but I didn't pick this one. I, I picked St. Mary's in that. So um, that's about it. Uh, hammer down. We'll talk to you soon. Hopefully it's after another victory. If not, maybe I'll have a, maybe I'll have a quick, quick cast between now and then. God bless you. And again, 
Really do appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon.